We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Burrit Sons. And how are you guys doing? I hope you guys had an amazing last week. And you're going to have an amazing week this week if you're watching on Monday. And I hope everything is just going so well. My week was great. I uh, went and saw my family this week. I went and saw my cousins. And, you know, we just chatted it up. We had fun. I went to the mall. <laughs> I'm mad these are like fun things that you do in a week now. These things that are used to be just so casually regular. Um, I went out with my friend Erica on Saturday. And it was mad. For me, it was just different because... We went somewhere, they have food there, or whatever the case may be, and they had hookah. But when we went there, it was really giving club energy. And, like, to experience something like that in New York City right now is so strange. Because, like, New York City is just, like, on cap right now. Like, we just, everything is just clipped. So, it was giving club energy during a panorama. But it wasn't like people could, like, people could stand up and dance, but you only could dance in your section. So you can't get up and dance with other people and, you know. But it was still giving very much club. But it was cute. I liked it. I loved the energy. Um, I had fun. It was, it was, a, it was a very, it wasn't a different experience because we experienced these things. It was just weird living that life again, similar in this type of and like this type of environment that we're currently living in, especially in New York City, because I know some of y'all like, girl, I be going clubbing, I've been to Atlanta, I've been to Houston, I've been to Miami, and y'all already even live this life. I ain't living in a minute, so yeah, that was fun, or uh, whatever. And yeah, that was pretty much my week. I feel like I did something else, but I'm not like remembering. But yeah, that was my week. Um. What has been going on in the world? Well, let's talk Little Nas X. I know I'm real late to the party, but um, you know, for me, I don't play with demons, I don't play with devils, I don't play with any of that. That's just on period. When I saw them posted online or whatever the case may be, like I saw somebody like post a snippet of the music video. I wasn't interested, but I wasn't offended because I just feel like people kind of like grow up and, I mean grow up, people in the music industry, anything with talent, they always dress up in these weird intricate things for their music videos. Music videos is like a space where you could just be very artsy fartsy. So when I saw the clip from the music video, did I want to watch? No. Was I offended? Not at all. Because I was just like, alright, he's doing some weirdo stuff. It's a music video, you know. A music video is a time for creativity. Fine. Then, where he lost me personally was with the sneakers. Because I'm like... So, what was the point of making demonic sneakers with the demon symbol and putting a drip of blood in it allegedly and just putting the the sign uh, the the um the scripture from when the devil fell from heaven? I was like, uh, -uh this is getting real demonic, okay? And it's not about him being a gay man, at least for me. Because I love Little Nas X. I used to be like, protect Little Nas X at all costs. Because I just thought he was so cute. He came out as gay. He was just funny. He seems funny to me. Like, he's just cool. He seems cool, but he's canceled in my book, personally. He is blocked. Um, I saw a video when um, James Charles did his, make did his makeup. And I thought he was just the cutest thing. And it's just like... He did this, and it just threw me off completely. Like, it just wasn't necessary. It wasn't needed. So, um, yeah, it was the sneakers for me. And I know a lot of y'all, like, well, he said that it's just basically, like, what he's trying to portray is, like, y'all keep telling me I'm going to hell, da-da-da-da, because I'm gay, so I went to hell in my music video. But my thing is, is like, what do that have to do with demon sneakers? Like, I, I don't get the correlation. Like, you trying to make, he's trying to make a co correlation between the two. For me, I don't see it. It's giving me that you really, really about that life. Like, you really want to represent Satan. Like, I, and I'm not here for it. And my thing is, it's not about just religion. To me, even if you're an atheist, even if you're agnostic, whatever, 
universally it's known that Satan demons is evil. He portrays evil. He, he it's, it's Satan demon is an evil person. Like universally, even if you don't believe in anything, we know if you see a devil, it's like oh my god, that's bad, that's scary. Like that's a universal symbol of just evil, terrible. It's not even biblical based. And another thing too, I want to call people out on is if you believe in Satan, then you believe in God. You can't believe in Satan and not believe in God. Like, that don't even correlate because those two things resonate with each other. So, people be like, oh, we don't believe in God, but they be um, representing Satan. People like that, I'll stay away from. Because how you want to believe in him but don't want to believe in God when they both align? You get what I'm saying? They both come from the same book in some ways. You get what I'm saying? But either way, if you don't believe in nothing... Even if I was to say I was atheist, I still wouldn't have liked Lil Nas X video or his sneakers. Because you, you on some demon time. Like, if you're not on the demon time that's trendy. You on the demon time that's demonic. And we don't do that. You feel me? Um, I also feel like conspiracy theory Britney. I don't feel like he did that over no, no being gay. Yeah, I'm going to speak on, on him. I'm going to. I'm going to be conspiracy theory Britney. I really feel like his music label told him to do that. I really genuinely feel like that. This is my theory on Lil Nas X. He did Old Town Road, or whatever the case may be, and Old Town Road was big. And when you do something so big, it's either you want to top it or you want to maintain the momentum. Lil Nas X was not able to top that song. Okay. He was not able to maintain the momentum after that song. He was not. And now he's trying to keep up, and he cannot keep up. So I feel like his label set him up. You ever been, even in regular 9 to 5 jobs, when people want to get rid of you, what they do is they'll set you up for failure. That, that to allow Lil Nas X to do something of that realm, you try to set him up for failure, especially as a black gay man. That sounds like that sounds like you 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 want to be canceled to me. I don't give a fuck. Like it sounds like you you just don't give a fuck. I feel like his label set him up to do that. He probably presented the idea, but as a real business person, you should have been like, you think that's a smart idea? Like you know what I'm saying? Like I feel like it was a setup. Like I feel like his label let him do that dumb shit. They entertained that idea so that he could like get bombed and maybe give up on music. I really feel like that. I really really feel like that because. They keep trying to push Lil Nas X or Lil Nas X is trying to push himself and maybe he's not getting the picture like your music is not really hitting. It's not like, like he gets views but like do we care about Lil Nas X music? Like even the, the little Gen Z girls, I don't hear them screaming Lil Nas X. Like I don't hear the, the girls raving about him. I don't. I don't. I don't. But I do hear people talk about him in terms of his personality. Like, we like Little Nas X. Like, you know of him, the way he dresses. Like, Old Town Road is just classical. I wish that he would have stuck to country rap. I thought that was a dope spectrum. I, I love Old Town Road to this day. Like, I want to take my horse on the Old Town Road. That song really go hard. I got the horses in the back. Hey, to say in the... That song goes hard. Like, I really wish there was, like, a genre for that. Like, country rap music. Because y'all know black people own country music respectfully. Even though the white community has taken it over. So, just to correlate that with rap was dope to me, number one. And it's just, like, it was a dope genre in the way he pulled it off. But I guess that was not something he never really wanted to do. Like, he made that song on some play play time and it really just hit um, I really wish that he enjoyed country rap because I feel like it would have really succeeded if he continued with it. But maybe that's not what he really actually wanted to do. And I think that's another reason that sticks with my conspiracy theory is because I feel like maybe his label signed to him and we, they was like, yo, we want you to do this. And he was like, that's not really what I want to do. And they probably didn't sign him on that time. Like sometimes these labels, they be signing artists. And entertaining their stupidity. They be like, look, just to get them to sign, just to take their money, just to get them in these 360 deals, they'll be like, look, come with our label. We let you do whatever you want creatively. Da 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 da. And maybe when they signed him, they thought creatively he was gonna be a country rap artist. And he was not. And he's on some this Monterio. He made that other little ice cold song. Like, I can't. Uh, what was Panini? Panini, Panini was cute. 
It was cute. It wasn't for me, but I do remember it kind of picked up a little momentum, just like a little, and then it fell. But um, I just felt like he did that for trends. I don't believe this whole, like, he did it because people keep telling him to go to hell. I, I, I just don't. I get it. I literally get it. Like, I get what he's saying, but when he did the sneaker thing, it started feeling very cloudy, very, I want to be a clout chaser, very, I want attention, like, I'm dying for it, please give me the attention I need, and when he did that, because what, what was the point of the sneakers? You get what I'm saying? Like, it was too much, and then he had the little, con uh-uh, y'all play with them demons, honey, that's for y'all, that's for y'all, because I won't be interested. And he's really, like, done to me. Like, I don't know. I, I just, I just, and I'm praying for him. Because I really, really feel like, and that's the thing. We need to really, like, learn the difference between, and that's the thing. People, that like, they're really so good at, what am I trying to say? Like, promoting this idea, but they really just be doing bullshit. Yeah, and we really need to to figure out that. That balance of knowing when people is just doing bullshit and putting a nice idea on it and when people are really serious. I don't care. I don't know Little Nas X personally. I never spoke to him about what, why he did this. I don't believe he did this with the intent of people keep telling me to take my gay ass to hell so I went to hell and gave the devil a lap dance. I don't believe it. I'm sorry. I really don't. Maybe I'm naive, you call me naive or whatever, but I just feel like he pushed it. Like, he, like, it was, it was alright. Like, the video was like, okay. But it was just, it was just giving me dire need for attention. That's what I got from it. Like, you want attention. And he got it. But it ain't gonna last long, because that's the thing with us, you know. You may be hot this week. And next week, what is it? And then you do something so extreme, just like with Old Town Road, you did some demon shit. Doing demon shit is the high. So how are you going to bring it back down? There's no coming down from that once you do some weirdo shit like that. Like, what are you going to do next for me? Like, and then, and, and I, and I dare him. I fucking dare him to try to clean it up. I dare Little Nas X to try to clean up demons. If he even did come out and say, I'm sorry for who this ever offended. This is not who I want to be. I never meant to offend nobody. That's really going to piss me off. Like, for some reason, it's going to really piss me off. Like, just be you. Stick to the, the, the demons you... <laughs> stick to the demons that you love, bitch. Like, don't try to come back with no apology when you do some shit like that. Like, don't even, don't you even try it to try to get us back in your good graces. Because you, you, you pushing it. Like, you pushing it. Like, ugh, I can't even be so fucking bothered. Like, did I tell y'all happy uh, belated Easter? Because, <laughs> uh, Lord, I told the demons out. Happy belated Easter. Because yesterday was Easter. Yeah, get me. Happy Resurrection Sunday to the real Christians. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Because it's getting scary out here for real. Like, for real. Okay? <laughs> I had to take a pause. Because that Luke Nice X got me jumping. I hear a lot of different perspectives on it. And also, too, like, I don't want to speak for the LGBTQAIA plus community. But I just want to say, too... Because I know how, even like with the black community, like we be feeling like we got to stick by certain stuff that stick by the black community at all costs, even when they do dumb shit. I'm not for that. Like, I really hope like the LGBTQ plus community, like y'all don't want to just stick by Lil Nas X just because he gay. Like, if you don't support that shit, then don't support it. Like, that's just me. Because I feel like sometimes people, because he came out as this openly gay rapper and he's just so gay and cute and just everything and he's really just like, yes. People feel like, I gotta stand by Lil Nas X. Like, if you don't support something somebody does, you don't have to stand by that. Like, I feel like that's what people is doing. And I hope that's not the case. Like, don't just support something because your favorite artist did it. You know what I'm saying? That's like on some idolizing shit. And I want to talk about that, but not today. But I just hope that's not what's going on. 
Cause you somebody you could love somebody and they do some dumb shit and it's okay to call them out like little not that you doing too much blah 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 like and still dead just you know like me personally I don't know if I I I, I, I look at me stuttering like I can't really bounce back from demonic stuff it's just not my forte you know what I'm saying um did anything else. Interesting happen this week. Um, prayers to ZMX currently, right now. I think he's still in critical condition. I don't know. We will find out. I'm pretty sure he'll bounce back. I hope. Um, I didn't even know he was still battling with um drug addiction. Like, every interview I've seen with him recently, he wasn't giving me that he was high, like, high, high. Like, he was just giving me, he was just. DMX like he has that rough raspy voice and it's just crazy like it's crazy like drugs ain't gonna fix it honey like once that high come down you still got the same problems you know what I'm saying once you drunk you know even with liquor you still got the same problems in the morning you know drinking ain't gonna fix your issues and all that stuff and drugs and all that so praise to DMX and yeah so, yesterday was Easter, if you're watching on Monday, or whatever the case may be. And, you know, when I think of Easter, even though the first day of spring is usually, what, like March 20s, the March 20-somethings is usually the first day of spring. For me, once Easter hit, it's like, it's spring. Like, it's really spring. Even if the weather is janky, because the weather is janky as hell over here in the East Coast, honey. One minute is 30 degrees, one minute is 80 <laughs> I'm like, I'm confused. But, um, yeah, for me, Easter is like, okay, it's spring. So, with that being said, I was like, I want to talk about spring cleaning. And not just in terms of, like, cleaning your house, but we're definitely going to talk about cleaning up and organization. Because, like, why not? But just spring cleaning. Like, cleaning your body. Cleaning your toxicity. Cleaning your house. Cleaning. You got to clean up respectfully because a lot of y'all just cleaning the house a lot of y'all just throwing out old clothes are we throwing out old friends are we throwing out old men are we throwing out our exes are we throwing out bad relationships bad jobs spring cleaning hello good morning so this week I do have an expand your mind because you know before most topics what do we like to do expand our minds expand your mind expand your mind expand your mind now this expand your mind um Talks about cleaning, but of course I'm going to correlate it with everything. So, but I just still like the article. So this is from EverwellHamilton.ca, which I think is California, but don't quote me, please. And it's called Spring Cleaning and Mental Health. Why decluttering is good for your body, mind, and soul. And I'll let you know, you guys know who um, wrote it shortly. So, remove... Removing clutter reduces stress. Aside from having a cleaner home, the physical action of housekeeping and the end result of a cleaner home helps relieve stress, anxiety, and depression. When stress affects the brain, the rest of the body suffers. Hello. Consequence suffers consequences as well. The physical activity of cleaning, moving, bending, scrubbing, dusting, sweeping, vacuuming produces endorphins. Which reduces stress levels, improves your ability to sleep, and boasts your overall boosts your overall mood. In a study on stress hormones by the University of California, those who described their house as messy or chaotic showed increased levels of cortisol, a steroid hor hormone produced in response to stress. Another study noted in the scientific journal Personality and Social psychology bulletin measured the way 60 women discussed their homes women who described their living spaces as cluttered or full of unfinished projects were more likely to be depressed and fatigued than women who described their homes as restful and restorative 
Um, it was another another part that I wanted to um, read to you guys. Well, I'll tell you. So basically, it was just like it doesn't tell you who wrote this article, by the way. So sorry, I don't know why. But um, I can't find the part. But it was basically saying like how um, cleaning up boosts your energy by like your stress reduces your stress level by 53% and things like that and just you know clearing your space decluttering and all that stuff and I feel like yes this article talks about decluttering your house keeping things less messy in terms of cleanliness of a home or a space but wouldn't we be able to correlate that to just in general like if if cleaning decluttering a home or cleaning up can reduce your stress level by 53 percent can you imagine what clearing out negativity in your life or or just leaving a toxic partner or just stepping back from certain things like really cleaning up your life cleaning up your head could do if just cleaning a room because cleaning well depending on how messy it is maybe 20 30 minutes to an hour gonna reduce your stress levels by 53 percent think about that they said that it, 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 it releases endorphins when you start cleaning and scrubbing bitch so what about you start cleaning and scrubbing out toxic behaviors and toxic people you know what I'm saying so when we do spring cleaning and it was a study by Clorox but you know I know some of y'all like well of course Clorox would say that but I'm, I really believe that and I'll say for me I like cleaning up I like doing organizational stuff I told y'all last week that I be this on my kitchen I like doing DIYs and it really calms me like for real and I think people who do DIYs and cleaning and decorating it definitely is a way of relieving stress and things like that and I think that cleaning in general is just something that we should do to just bring our stress levels down in terms of just cleaning and cleaning out people um what I want to talk about too is like when do we clean clean because you know how it's things that you clean right you clean up and you keep it but you just organize it in a certain way right like you'll be like yo I got because I see a candle in front of me I got 50 candles do I need 50 candles for you you might feel like I need 50 candles I use my candles all the time you know what I'm saying for some it's like this is creating clutter in my life let me throw out 45 of them and keep five now when you throw something out right you can't get that back but if you keep those 50 candles and you organize it in such a way and maybe you buy something to keep it clean it's still clean you still have it in your parameters you still can have it of reach you may have an access amount of it but you have it organized in such a way and I think that we could correlate that to balance in our lives that's called having balance right so do we need to throw out this person completely is this somebody that you need to throw out or is this somebody that you need to organize properly in your life and create balance hello good morning it's giving me metaphor <laughs> and I didn't even prepare that <laughs> but I'm so dead ass so that's what I want to talk about is because like I feel like you know with me I could, I, and then I'll be open, you know. Sometimes I kind of, lately, what I've been doing is trying to create balance. I've been trying to organize my life as it pertains to relationships and friendships and families and everything that I do. I'm trying to create balance. I'm trying to organize it. I don't want to throw things completely away. But sometimes I wonder because, you know, I always hear the term that, <sighs> unfortunately, it's, it's one of the terms that really hurt. hurt hurts my heart is that not everybody's gonna be in life forever some people are there for a season and you know it's just and, and, and that's just part of life and so for me I'm trying to figure out 
do these things do do some things and things in my life need to go away completely or do I need to balance it out and organize it in my life in such a way where it's not consuming me you get what I'm saying and not just with people just anything in general things that I do or whatever the case would be and I'm quite sure some of you guys could relate so how do we know when something needs to be thrown away and when something can be kept but organized properly because that's the problem we have a lot of clutter what we try to do, what we need to do, when we do spring cleaning, we try to declutter. We try to clean. We try to organize. A lot of us have clutter where we have people in our lives that's consuming us with all their problems, cluttering our headspace. Every time they hit us up, they complaining, telling us about X, Y, and Z. I was listening to a podcast and they were telling me how they had a friend that would just literally, I was like, oh my God, I would never that would just always text them whatever they do like if they was going to get a cup of coffee from starbucks or if um it was on the friend zone podcast like was it friend zone or the read it was the read it was the read it was the read and um she was basically like texting her, fr her she was like i don't know how to tell her like I, I just really want you to fall back, step back, and, like, stop texting me so much. But she was just literally texting her stupid stuff. Like, I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. Like, she'd be like, I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Oh, my gosh. Tell me why I just used the bathroom. And I just saw a big, like, I don't know. Like, it was just weird. Like, imagine somebody texts you their everyday detail. Like, bitch, you better go get a Twitter. And just tell people Facebook. I, that reminds me of Facebook. Like, why she don't just go on Facebook? Like, people be on Facebook just telling you they everyday detail. Like, detail for detail for detail their day. Day by day, detail, detail. Like, stuff like that, you gonna have to declutter. Okay? And a lot of times, all of that is based on communication. It's just like, tell them straight up. Like, honestly, I don't want to hear your day to day. Sometimes you gotta get straight to the point because that's stressful. Like, yeah, you could put that person on mute. Oh, but then she said that she like stopped answering her, and then her friend was getting mad. Like, oh, why don't you like answer my text message? <laughs> People crazy. Imagine, imagine, and I believe it. I believe that shit to the T, yo. Cause it really be some people like that. Like, I dead believe that that shit happened. Like, cause even like I can't relate. On that spectrum where somebody would like text me like remedial, remedial ass shit. Like remedial. Like that's crazy. I feel like, and that's no shade to like people who live in like smaller towns or cities or whatever. I feel like people like that would do something like that. Where they just like, like you don't have nothing to do so you're going to text a person whenever like oh today i just found a new ring at claire's like why are you telling me this like you get what i'm saying so stuff like that you need to declutter you need to find balance and in that instance you need to just tell that person like look straight up like you be talking too much nonsense to me you don't have to say it like that you can find a way to say it nicely and if if that friend doesn't respect your boundaries that's when you throw it out now you gotta go and honestly, too, I feel like a lot of times you don't even have to throw that person out. They'll throw themselves out. Certain stuff throw themselves out. You know what I'm saying? Certain things, just like in your house, you might have old things. They done got ripped, tatted, torn, destroyed, boom, bang, boom. You ever had something so old, next thing you know, the shit done broke. Because, bitch, you had to throw it out. It threw itself away. It just broke to pieces. Because you held on to that shit for too long, sis. It was deteriorating. And then one day that shit just fell and broke. That's just basically what happens sometimes in relationships. It will naturally just deteriorate on its own. Like certain things. Whether it's a friendship, whether it's a relationship, it's gonna it's gonna leave on its own. But sometimes you gotta make sure you get rid of it before you destroy yourself. Cause you want that thing to destroy it. Destroy it on its own. But you don't want to destroy yourself in the process. And um it's all about communication. You know what's so funny talking about communication? One of my top Brit Says episodes was talking about communication. When I talked about the episode of communication, and it was just so funny to me because I'm like, damn, communication is something that people struggle with. And I think what is it, what it is is that it's not about what you say, it's about how you say it. And sometimes, you know... Things may sound blunt, but it just be true. A lot of things don't be blunt. Like, if I, if you tell a person, like, I don't want to hear about your day-to-day -day activities, that sounds mean as fuck. 
only because you know that's what that person likes doing. But technically, when you say it, it's not really a mean thing to say. Like, a lot of times. It's like you just telling the truth. Now, if you be like, bitch, I don't want to hear about the dumb shit you do. Vice versa. Honestly, you text me a lot. I don't want to hear about your day-to-day -day activities. You get what I'm saying? You see the difference? They both, in some way, sound mean. Because imagine if, like, imagine if you the person that deadass texts the person every day, like, I'm going to Starbucks. I'm going to get a new paper clip. I'm buying a new pencil today. Imagine if you that person and somebody dead tell you, like, honestly, I want you to lower it on the texting. I don't want to hear your day-to-day -day activities anymore. Sound mean. But it's not me. It's very simple. It's very straight to the point. It's very, you know, it is what it is. Um, so, you know, we just got to communicate certain things to certain people. Say what you feel. Say what you want to say. And if that person decides to leave and that person doesn't really like the way you're moving, then, you know, you got to... You gotta do what it gotta do. Like you, you, you gonna have to really just move on. Like it's nothing you can do. You just gonna have to. Um, it'll naturally deteriorate on its own. Naturally, it just will. It will deteriorate all on its own, honey. You don't have nothing to worry about. Um, and that's the thing too with decluttering is like you gotta create balance. Like I have. Things that I do and I'm like, I gotta create balance. Whether it's like the things I do in my life or like, but with me, when I was telling you guys, like I would film Brit Says on a Sunday and it's just like, it comes out Monday. So how can I create balance where it's not consuming me? Even small things like just making better choices to me is considered spring cleaning and decluttering. See, like those are things you don't need to get rid of. You don't have to get rid of the podcast. Or get rid of the business plan. You need to figure out a way to put it in your life properly. Right? So maybe you're doing so much for your business Monday through Sunday. And if it's a small business. I mean I understand that people say you got to dedicate your every day to a business. In order for it to be successful. But um, maybe you don't have that luxury. Maybe you have kids. Maybe you have... um. A full time job or whatever the case may be and you can't just do those things like respectfully like so for me I mean you gotta find a way to create balance if that's what you want and if you aren't doing good with those businesses too sometimes we do have to learn to let things go right that's a, a topic nobody wants to talk about um when do you let go of a business right it happens I feel like Maybe I let go of one business that I needed to let go because I wasn't passionate about it. Um, but a lot of things I didn't need to let go. Like, I, sh I wish I would have kept going with it. But when when is things becoming too much? When do you have to stop? When is this not, you know, this... Because something could not... A business could not be lucrative in the moment, but you know it eventually will be lucrative, right? When do you know, like, this shit never going to work? It just doesn't allow with me. I'm not doing good with the business. I'm not like when do you know? Um that's crazy. I I, I don't even want to really speak on that. How <laughs> you say? Because you know, it's like a dream killer type of thing. I think it's just something you know. It's just like the the rapper that raps. He be rapping to he, he's been rapping since he's up until he's fifty chit bitch. Like it's one of those things, and um, but what if he gets big at 50? You would never know, you know, but just create some balance, you know what I'm saying? Try to create that balance as it pertains to relationships, men and women, dating. Um, Y'all know how that go. Y'all know how that go. You know, it's spring. It's 2021. We've been through enough in 2020. We've been through enough in general, bitch. If you got to clean a nigga up, if you got to clean a girl up, if you got to clean anybody up, clean them up. If you got to organize them in such a way where it's appropriate, then fine. Just like a, a good way to say when you need to organize somebody in your life. It's like, you know how you get into a new relationship and you kind of get overzealous and you kind of under that person 24-7. Now your family and friends are like, damn, you don't even hang out with me no more. You don't even chill with me no more. Fuck out of here. You got a man. You moving funny. Uh-uh-uh. So, 
how do you create that balance? Like, yeah, sometimes when people do be ODing, like, you get a man, you do not have to be with him 24-7, like, bitch. Like, I understand, like, in the beginning, you want to show him, like, look, I'm dedicated. Like, I am consistent. Because consistency is key. Like, me, I was big on that when it came to finding somebody I wanted to be with was consistency. Like, I'm not here for the ghosting. I'm not here for, I text you, you text me back a week later. You text me back a month later, bitch. Like, no, text me that today. It's on my phone right now. Like, I'm I'm big on that. So, I understand consistency and, like, in the beginning of a relationship, you need to show yourself. You need to reveal that I am consistent. I want to be with you. I want this relationship. I'm looking for a relationship. So, I understand that 100% completely. Um, so, you often don't want to say no in the beginning of a relationship to anything because you just want to show, like, I'm here. I like you. And I want to build with you. Oh, my God. That's so cute. <laughs> Um, but then some of y'all get carried away and y'all just doing this consistently. Like, I already showed you that I'm consistent. I already showed you that I want to be with you. And you've been together for a year. So, what more do I need to show you? Um, so yeah, that's why creating that balance. Like, you can't be up under... Let me not say you can't. You can do whatever you want. But, you know, if your friends and your family was there for you before this man came in. And they was there for you hard body. Like, they was really there. Then, yeah, you can show a little love to your family and friends, you know, if if need be. If you want to, you know, you just step out once in a while. Maybe not all the time, because I know that sometimes, like me, I just don't be wanting to go out the house. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I don't want to leave the house or whatever the case may be, but try to find the time. Or maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe you don't want to hang around this friend or family member because you think they annoying. This, that's where communication comes in place, honey. And you can communicate to them like, look... I don't like being around you so much. Actually, I don't like the term like, you know, I don't want to be around you that much. Lately, you've been saying certain things that I don't approve of and blah, 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 boom, boom, boom. And they can pick and choose if they want to leave or if they want to stay. But you won't have to clean that up. We got to sweep these things up. We got to sweep all the problems that we got in our life up. And we, we got to throw it out. Okay? Do you want to keep these people in your life or do you want to throw them out? And like I said, it's, it's either you want to keep things and organize it, you're going to take things and throw them out, or you're going to take things and place them in such a way you're going to hold on to something so, so strong, bitch, and then it's going to deteriorate on its own. And, you know, I worry about that all the time. Like, damn, what's going to deteriorate in my life? But obviously you can't consume yourself wondering about the things that will deteriorate. You know what I'm saying? You see who's who's for you and who's not for you. When you go through some shit and motherfuckers ain't there. Um, when you go through things and people don't respect that you moving differently based off of your experiences and the things that you're going through. You're going to learn who's there for you and who's really not. You know what I'm saying? But I also want to bring up, um, you know, that you can't always... Uh, how can I explain? Always expect people to be so keen and so privy to what you're going through. So, I want people to be mindful of that too. Like, because I feel like people be cutting people off because they was like, oh, he or she wasn't there for me when this happened or they didn't show up for this event. And it's like, you kind of don't know what they were going through. And even if you feel like their situation is not as big or as traumatic as yours there's no need for you to cut them off for that you know what i'm saying so i feel like that's what i'm saying like you got to make sure that you have those conversations with people like telling them like you know i felt like you wasn't there for me the way i wanted you to be there for me in that time or that time frame or i just felt like you know you you just weren't being a good friend or family or whatever or partner or shit um just make sure you communicate that because I feel like a lot of times we be throwing people out. Make sure you ain't throwing out the wrong things. And and, and people really don't know how to engage. And that's a conversation I want to have too. I might have to do an episode on that though. Because I really do be wanting to hold people to a certain standard though. Respectfully. Because I be feeling like a lot of times I get it. Like I get the idea that somebody may not know how to react but my, for me sometimes i'll be wondering like why like you a big ass fucking adult like you don't understand that if something go down that you're supposed to react this way or when these type of things happen that you're supposed to do this like you're supposed to be here for this or that like as an adult 
Like, for real. Like, like I really be feeling like people need to be held accountable and stop saying, oh, I didn't know that was what I was supposed to do. No, you knew that was what you're supposed to do and you just didn't do it. Like, for real. Like, I really be feeling like that. Like, it, it just goes, like, like, this is what I'm talking about. Even with, like, the little Nas X thing. Like, stop saying that you did this, 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 and this, and you ain't know how I was going to impact people. Or you just did it because it is. No, know, that, know the ramifications and the repercussions of the decisions that you make and what you do. You get what I'm saying? Like, y'all motherfuckers be knowing exactly what y'all doing. Like, I'm real tired of this narrative. Like, even though I say it, I'm going to be honest, I'm real tired of the narrative that people don't know. You fucking know. Stop. It's just like y'all be trying to like hold celebrities to these high standards. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, they knew better. They knew they shouldn't have did that. But you be the same person that when something happened, you be doing the wrong thing, saying the wrong shit, moving the wrong way. You get what I'm saying? Like, you should know better as well. How you expect the celebrity to know better, but you don't? Oh, when I said that, I didn't think it would offend you. Yes, the fuck you did. You knew it was going to get me tight. You knew exactly what you was doing when you was doing it. And that's the thing. People, we all, a lot of us is witty. A lot of us is real witty. Like, some people, they know how to really, like, when you approach them about something, they already on their ones and twos. Like, they already know what to say. Like, oh, well, I didn't think that would upset you because usually when I do, no, my nigga, you knew what it was. Like, you really knew what it was. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, people be knowing. If you're, if, to keep it a buck, I even think kids be knowing. So, I'm going I'm to really shake the room. I think that if you 11 and over, <laughs> bitch, yes, I said 11. 11 years old. I'm, I'm saying 11. Bitch, I was close to saying 8. If you 11 and up, you know exactly what you're doing. We as people are not dumb. Even the dumbest of the dumb is not dumb. I'm telling you that. We know exactly what we're doing. We are, we know all the decisions we make. Whenever we say or do something, I feel like we know exactly what we're doing and why we're doing it. Now, I give a tiny bit of leeway that sometimes we do stuff by mistake, but after we, I feel like after we do it, we be, we'll, we'll think maybe even two hours or three hours later, like, damn, that might have offended that person. I really feel like that. I do feel like people fuck up in a moment sometimes because sometimes we be doing too much. Like, so you might fuck up in a moment, but I do feel like later... Without somebody having to tell you, you realize like, oh, I might have hurt this person's feelings. You get what I'm saying? Or you might realize like, oh, shit. Like, you ever say something? Like, I'm trying, let me think about like a good example. Let's say you said something about, I don't know. What's something that people do? I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of something offensive. Like, let's say, I think. Uh, all right, well, people act like they don't know. So, let's say you say something about gay people or something, right? You in a room, laze boom boom, and let's say you say something about gay people at a family dinner, right? And your 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 aunt or your sister has a child that that everybody thinks this even is problematic, might be gay, but he or she just won't come out, right? You know damn well. You know damn motherfucking well, even though that child has not come out as gay, that they might be gay. Even if you think they might be gay and they're not gay. Even if you, we all know this is a family discussion going on around the block. We all been talking in the streets like, yo, I think little Johnny, he might be a little, have a little sugar in his tank or whatever. But your stupid ass gonna say some disres disrespectful shit about gay kids at the fucking family function, knowing that we all think Lil Johnny is gay. But you, now, if I was to approach this person, they'd be like, oh, well, Lil Johnny never said he was gay, so I didn't think it was offensive. My nigga, like, stop. Like, even if we don't know, we all talked about it, we all kind of feel the energy. Why would you say that? You get, Why would you say something offensive about gay people, knowing that somebody in the room may or may not be gay? Regardless, even if you think it, even if you feel it, and certain stuff you just don't say. Like, read the room. Like, you get what I'm saying? Certain stuff you just should not say. And then they'll be like, oh, well, I didn't know their child was gay. She keeps saying that. Because, uh, you, you know, people be offensive, I mean, defensive over their kids. So, they'll be like, Aunt Sharon keeps saying that he not gay. So, I didn't see no problem with me saying it. But you knew it was a problem. You knew Johnny was gay. You know. And you know Auntie Sharon know, 
But right now, she's in the phase of denial. So why the fuck would you say some disrespectful shit about gay people? Like, if that's the type of shit I'm talking about. Like, I think that's a really good example. That's the type of shit I'm talking about. Like, y'all, like, we need to really start holding motherfuckers accountable. And then we'd be like, well, maybe they didn't know. No, you knew. Bitch, you knew. You knew not to say that dumb shit. Whatever they choose to say. I can't think of nothing offensive right now about gay people because that's not the type of time I be on. You knew damn well you shouldn't have said that dumb shit. But you still said it. Stop. Stop. For real. That was a different topic. But those type of people we do need to declutter. We need to declutter not holding ourselves accountable for our decisions. Right? And let's talk about cluttering ourselves. Because we talk about relationships. We talk about friends, family. Let's talk about our actions. Right? Let's say you was on your sharing. Maybe today you should sit back and think about that moment. And say, you know, I really need to be mindful of what I said. What I did was wrong. You know what, today I'm going to apologize. I don't give a fuck if that shit happened in 2019. I'm going to apologize today in 2021. And I want to let them know I'm holding myself accountable. I'm decluttering the bullshit. For real. For real. And it's going to make you feel better. Like, for real. We need to do spring cleaning. We need to clean the house. We need to clean our spirits. Cause some of y'all spirits is just not there. You, you can't see me but I can fold in my hand. Some of y'all spirit ain't there. Like for real. Like for real. And y'all really need to do a lot of spring cleaning. For real. And you do need to clean your house. The roaches and rats cannot stay. That's, that's inhibitable. Okay. So, yeah, we talk about spring cleaning, the spirit, and, and relationship stuff, but the house is key, too. Because you heard what they said. It's going to bring down, um, bring up your, um, bring down your stress levels by 53%. You get what I'm saying? And we don't want to be as stress-free. We have a lot on our plate. You get what I'm saying? So, let's do little things like clean the house and just try to fix things. I feel like no matter what, even when you try to be your best version of yourself, because I know even if you listen to the podcast, we do talk about trying to be the best versions of ourselves. You're never going to be perfect. You know what I'm saying? Everything is a day-by-day -day basis. Like, maybe, you know, this month you could work on spring, spring cleaning, having a better spirit, and you might fuck up in two months when it comes to that. But at least you're trying. At least you had a good month. You had one good month. Just one. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's big. Because we are humans. We always fall short. So, I think that is really important to just be able to try every once in a while. Like, just try. Like, just try. And, um, especially if you're at, like, my age. I'm 29. I'm pushing 30. And even if you're not, actually. Even if you're, like, 21. Start now. Just start now trying to be a, a better person and just clearing out um, bad people or mo moving things out of your life that don't need to be there. You know, back to relationships. You know, I hear a lot of stories about people in relationships where the person is just evil. You know, they're mean. They're abusive, verbally abusive. Um, They're not for you. And you know it. Leave. You don't deserve that. Like, I hear something like, do you deserve that? You know what I'm saying? Like, just for your heart and your spirit. You know? What about if you, you know, you're a side chick? Stop. You want to be the side? You know what I'm saying? I do, like I said last week, I do think, you know, women be cheating. And I don't think it's right. That's a different topic, child. I don't get to all those topics. But do you want to be the main or you want to be the side? Some people say the side come with less drama. But also, it's the feeling of feeling like, dang, you wouldn't even show me off. Like, if you was to see me in the street, would you say hello? Like, what the fuck? Like, that's weird as fuck to me. You know, so try to, like, think of what you want. What is it that you want? And, like, if there's something that you want and you don't have it, and you doing something the opposite of what you want. Maybe you need to throw that out. If you know you want marriage. Why are you playing the side chick role? You get what I'm saying? Why? Throw that shit out. You don't even want it. What are the things that you got right now that you don't dead ass even want? That's the whole point of spring cleaning. You throwing out shit that you don't want. Or things that you don't use. Things that are not of use to you. So why keep it? Throw that shit out. That us. Throw that shit out. Throw that shit in the garbage. Respectfully. 
Those are things that you throw in the garbage. Boom. Things that you throw out are things that you don't want. You don't want to be the side chick. You want to be committed to. You want marriage. So, throw that nigga out if he not willing to commit. Right? Things that are not of use to you. Things that are, are just, it's just like meaningless. Like, what's something that's just meaningless? Like, what are you, what, 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 what are you good for? Y'all done never had somebody go like that ain't good for shit. They'll, that could be somebody that's a user. Like, somebody could be in your life and they just consuming you with their bullshit and their problems. But then when you bring your problems to the table, they don't want to hear it. To me, you're of no use. I'm dead ass. Because you just using me. You draining me. You always asking me for something. Or maybe somebody who's, who's financially abusing you. You always asking me for money. You always asking me for this. But if I was to come to you and ask you for the same shit, you can't bring it. You're useless. <laughs> you're of no use. My nigga, throw that ass out. People who use you but can't do it in return, they're considered useless. They're they're of no use. Throw them out. Okay, so that's something I consider of no use. So we're throwing out things that we don't want. You don't want it. Things that are of no use, throw them out. Motherfuckers that keep calling your phone complaining about shit, but when you start complaining, they, they don't want to hear it, throw them motherfuckers out. Those are things you don't want. Things that are already broken and, and trash and they're going to break by next week. <laughs> or in, in, a, in a mental health or relationship aspect in a year or two. Even if that shit about to break and it's going to break and it might break real bad. It's just like a car. If the brakes is broken, the fucking brakes is broken, the engine is, is trash. You better go get a new one. Or you might get in a car accident and now you, you, done, you done made the situation worse when you should have just been through the shit out. Right? Same thing. The shit is already broken, bitch. Throw it out. And, and broken beyond repair. That's what I'm talking about. Like, it, like it, it can't be fixed. And if you and if you keeping things that are broken beyond beyond repair, you're putting yourself in a dangerous position. Like, think about that. Like, a car. If you driving a car that's really dead ass broken. You could get into a car accident, that car could stop in the middle of the street, and then boom, a car hit you, the brakes not working, you try to brake and boom, now you did a fucking car crash, bitch, now you got a lawsuit, your limbs broke, your back broke, you might hurt somebody by accident, bitch. If it's broken, beyond, beyond repair, it's just not fixable, throw it out. And I don't know how to give an example of a real life situation, but bitch, you probably know one, throw it out. Things that need to be organized. Organization. We talked about like with businesses. Because everybody got a business. Find balance. Show which way that you can incorporate your business into your life. And still be able to be the mother you want to be. The father you want to be. Still be able to do your job at your best. But maybe you got. Maybe your business is booming. You're going to have to quit your job. <laughs> balance. Right? You in a relationship. In a loving relationship. You love your man. You love your woman. But now you put your family and friends on the back burner. Balance. How are you going to balance that out? How are you going to organize that? You have to have organization. You going to put your husband up here? Or, no. You put your kids up here? Well, for me. I'll put my kids up here. I'll put my husband here. Family. Friends. But just organize it. Some of y'all don't have no, no, no tear. Y'all just got your man. That's it. Yo, kids, like that's it. Just, you don't got nothing else there. Knowing that you got all this and all that stuff is cluttered now. Take that stuff, organize it in your life in such a way where you like it. Hello, good morning. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's called organization. You're creating balance. You know what I'm saying? We're doing spring cleaning in your house. Make sure that's clean too, baby. Make sure it's clean. Make sure it's organized. Throw out all this bullshit that you got in the house that you don't need. These clothes that you don't wear. For real. Like, you're going to talk about spring cleaning as well, even in the house. It has to be done. It needs to be done. It needs to be organized. It needs to be clean. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Baby. <laughs> but, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This was a good episode. I am so happy. I'm I'm ready to spring clean. 
And when I come up here, I be listening to what I say, and I'm just like, yo, I want to do this. I want to declutter. I want to. I want to um, throw some stuff out. I want to organize. I want to do it all. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. I hope you guys definitely enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys had an amazing Easter. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing week this week. I hope you guys follow me. And I hope, please do, follow me on Instagram, underscore Bristagram. Make sure you're subscribing. If you're streaming, make sure you're commenting, leaving a review, leaving the five stars, baby. Okay? Um, what else? You guys can follow me on Twitter, Brissess, two S's. TikTok, I'm be on TikTok, but it's Briss has one. Yeah, just make sure you subscribe, comment, share. Make sure you're telling a friend, a family member, anybody. Like, yo, podcast Liddy. Send the link, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, make sure you send the link. Make sure you're telling people. Just do it. Like, what's up? What's the issue? What's the problem? Are we beefing? Do you want to fight? <laughs> So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hope you guys do your spring cleaning. Start this week. Start mapping it out. Start planning it out. Start figuring it out. What is it that you want to do? Let me know. And I will see you guys when? Next.